Here's a video that I know a number of you have been wanting me to do on how to convert the UDP multicast that the TV server puts out into TCP unicast. And the reason you want to do that is because not everyone has enterprise grade equipment that can handle multicast traffic. Well, I'll show you how to do that now. So the first thing we need to do is install a UDP to TCP proxy. So we go to this site, udpxy.com. And you can see in the download here, we have the latest source. I'll just copy the link location. Now, wget that. And download the source code. Now we have to compile this, but it's not a big drama. Uh, just do tar xvf uh, udpxy, cd udpxy, then make. And that makes the uh, binary file for the Raspberry Pi here. Okay, once that's made, we just make install. And that's it. So to run it, just do udpxy port, we'll say 8080. That's the port that it's gonna listen on for TCP connections. Now, if I go back to VLC and just start the RTP stream. Now, this is the multicast stream. This is how we connected to it before. Okay, so that connects, still got uh, UDP multicast coming out of the Raspberry Pi into the network. So it's still a multicast server. I'll stop that. I'll open a different network stream. Now, this time we're using HTTP, putting the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, port 8080, which is what we just set up down here, and then slash UDP slash the same multicast group that we were using before. Okay, so when I want to run that, we get the TV from the Raspberry Pi, but this time it's coming in on TCP. Okay, now we've got the stream coming from the Raspberry Pi via TCP, but it's still being put out onto the network with multicast from the Raspberry Pi, because we haven't stopped that yet. We've just added one TCP stream. So it's a bit stressful for the Raspberry Pi at the moment doing all this work, because it becomes heavy now. The multicast server is quite simple, but now it has to think a bit more and we get a couple of errors on the screen. But what I'll do now is I'll stop the multicast from leaving the Raspberry Pi. When a host wants to send out an IP packet onto a network, it first checks its routing table. Now that's for any type of packet going out there, layer three packet. So we'll have a look at the routing table that I've currently got. What this says is these addresses here that start with 192.168.1 because of this 24-bit mask, it sends them out device ethernet zero. Now that's just the network adapter. So basically it's saying it's anything that's on that network is gonna be findable anyway. So it just spits it out the network adapter. Now, if it's not part of that network, it'll, it's got nothing else other than this default one. It'll say, all right, don't know what to do with it. So we'll send it to a gateway, which is your next device, which would be your router. So anything that's on the internet or any other address that's not part of its own network, it doesn't know what to do with, so it sends it to the next device in the hope that it does. Now, if we remember, the multicast group's address was 239.1.1.11. Now that 239, that doesn't fall within this network here. So it just sends it to out the default one, which just happens to be ethernet zero anyway. Okay, the gateway address doesn't really come into it because multicast isn't routed like normal traffic. So that's what it goes through when it sends out the packet. So we still get it out of the network. So incidentally, if you had no default gateway assigned and you only had your know, 192.168 there, multicast wouldn't leave because it wouldn't know what to do with it. But what we can do is make another loopback interface and set the route so that multicast traffic goes to that loopback instead of out of the interface. And by doing that, we can keep the multicast traffic within the host here. So we'll do that now. First, we wanna add another loopback interface. So we'll just do IP address add 1.2.3.4, that's 32, uh, dev loopback, label loopback one. Now, for the route, we'll just do IP route add 224.0.0.0 slash four dev and tell it to go to that newly made loopback interface. Okay, so that route that I've just added, if I show it, that covers all the multicast groups. So this time when it goes to send out that 2391111, it will see that it falls under this uh, part of the routing table and I'll say, okay, just send it to the loopback. So it won't leave the physical interface of the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so I'll start this streaming the TV, just run DV Blast. 
and that started and what we notice is the network light isn't going crazy okay so it's serving but it's not sending it out of the Raspberry Pi's physical adapter so it's not swamping the network it's sending it to that loopback instead okay so using that program we installed we can just access it via the HTTP TCP link and open up that network stream okay so the video is coming from the Raspberry Pi to this host here but it's coming via TCP and the UDP has not left the Raspberry Pi so for a home network this won't kill it now the reason primarily you want to use multicast is if you have a multicast enabled network it's much more efficient to do so because when the Raspberry Pi streams multicast it only has to serve each channel once no matter how many clients want to connect to it they don't actually connect directly to this they just via the network infrastructure receive that um, multicast group but using TCP like this this becomes a server so if you have 10 clients that want to watch something even if it's the same thing there has to be 10 individual connections to the Raspberry Pi which now becomes taxing on the Raspberry Pi and also its network interface so multicast is better for large-scale things because not everything not everything is for a home user okay um, if you're an ISP or a big corporate building or some hotel or something it's much more efficient to use multicast as long as you've got the network um, capability now this is just a Raspberry Pi you might want to use a more powerful server but just keep in mind that every client that watches a TV station creates their own link to the Raspberry Pi that it has to serve now that's working fine and now that it's TCP you can do other things like maybe open a port on your firewall and access your TV server from out in the world somewhere if you're that way inclined and also because it's TCP you'll avoid those uh, wireless issues that you have with multicast that I spoke of in a previous video as well okay so that's just a different design for a different purpose if you're a home user on simple consumer grade equipment you might want to use the TCP method so you don't cripple your wireless or your switch and all the rest of your network but if you want to scale this very large like I said is quite possible that's where you'll want to do multicast so different design for different purpose I'll give you the options and you can choose